Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a battle group preview of the 16th Luftwaffe, a new division added in the second wave DLC. Now this was recorded pre-release so just bear that in mind and this isn't one of my battle group overviews. Um, I will be doing those a couple weeks after the DLC has been released but for now we're just going to have a look at the units and see what we have to work with. So First of all, uh, Luftwaffe Aufklara. These are basically a standard recon two-man infantry squad with uh, six HE. One thing to note is the uniforms are very damn cool in this division. They do come with the UE 630MG, which is a very interesting uh, sort of half-track, I guess, <laughs> which is uh, yeah pretty cool. Uh, it comes with a mounted MG34 7HE 600 uh, meter range not the most superb fire support vehicle but does have armor so does mean that it might survive an engagement versus enemy infantry so that works out quite well um, these are probably going to have to be brought in just because of a recon availability in phase A but we also have Luftwaffe Fusiliers which again have the cool blue uniforms I guess they're kind of like grey blue uniforms with the like camo over the top, which is interesting. But these guys have the Bergman uh, MP28, a very, very old submachine gun. And they also have the Car 98s as their main gun. So they've got a total of like 8 HE at close range, which is actually not too bad. And at long range, 6 HE in combination with the MG15 that they have, another old machine gun. And uh, they also have the Faust Patron, which is, again, a very old weapon system. Uh, like just a simple rocket there. Just as effective as a Panzer Faust uh, in this game, but still. 100mm heat rocket. Um, it's going to be pretty nice. And honestly, for a recon squad, a 9-man recon squad, having a AT weapon that you can fire at 150m range isn't too shabby at all, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of these Luftwaffe Fusiliers. In Phase B you can get some more Luftwaffe Aufklader with the uh, Kubel MG, which has the MG42 of course, and some more Luftwaffe Fusiliers. Pretty awesome uh, recon units, although not much variance, just a couple. But still, pretty nice units in themselves. In the Infantry tab... We've seen Luftwaffe Jäger before with the Jägers, but this division like almost solely re relies on them. So you've got Luftwaffe Führer in Phase A, which have a smoke grenade, which can be relatively useful, and they've got reasonable HE, uh, 7 HE at close range, so maybe look after themselves a little bit, but I wouldn't get them in combat if I were you use that smoke grenade to get the hell out of there. Um, but we do have the Luftwaffe Jäger with the reasonable armaments i mean they are <laughs> mediocre at best um 25 points they do have the disheartened trait 5 he on their close range 6 he on their long range and they do have the uh, false patron again you can see it on that chap's back it's a lot smaller uh, head than the uh panzer faust but still does the job um yeah yeah, they're going to be your line infantry, but I wouldn't rely on them too much. You also have access to the Luftwaffe Pioneers. These guys have two submachine guns as opposed to one, as well as the uh, two 20 HE power grenades. So these are actually going to be pretty decent for taking on infantry early on, especially in uh, close quarters combat. You also have access to the MG34, mounted MG34 with 800 meter range. And um, you get quite a lot of them quite high availability, 30 point costs. Um, these will be nice for helping you defend where you need to. So yeah, it's going to be re decent uh, availability, that's for sure. And as you move into phase B, well, you basically just get more of each. You get more Luftwaffe Führer, you get more Luftwaffe Jäger, more Luftwaffe Pioneer, and the Luftwaffe um, MG271, which is a mounted heavy machine gun. With 9 HE power very very awesome also seven accuracy if you look at the mg34 it only has five accuracy that seven accuracy can be deadly so pretty awesome mg 
Not entirely sure if it will be used too much because you're probably going to rely on the availability of your units as opposed to the punching power. But uh, still, very, very cool unit in at the end there, the MG271, new addition to Steel Division. Very cool. I'm also just loving these, these uh, uniforms. I really like them. Now in the tank tab, <laughs> this is where things get a little bit funny with this division. You get the Panzer 730M, which is basically a Renault that's been captured, a uh, French tank, and um, been mounted with a, the Mac 31, uh, 8 HE power, but look at this speed, 10 kilometers per hour off-road and 15 kilometers per hour speed on-road. It's not even much of a difference, but these things are going to take ages to get to the front line, and... Um, they are only 10 points a piece, so I don't even know if they, these would be worth bringing in. It feels like you'd be wasting 10 points bringing one of these in because they'd never get to the front line, and when they do, they'll just die because by the time you get there, um, they're just going to get popped very easily. But 600 meter range as well, I mean, it's going to take them ages to get into that range in the first place. Uh, you can see that these have 10 kilometer per hour off road speed. Just to compare this, like the Luftwaffe Jaeger, 18 kilometers per hour speed, so they're slower than like a running man which is uh, rather silly you also have the 730c so this has a 4 ap power cannon and a 1 he power <laughs> as well no machine gun so yeah again just as bad really 20 points um, probably worse than the 730m for the cost so I would just avoid bringing these in. But they're, they're a nice little unit nonetheless and I guess historically accurate. Moving into B, you get the uh, Stug 3 F8, which is nice. Uh, Befeld Stug 3 in Phase C and Stug 3 Gs in Phase C as well. So nice little range of Stugs in the later phases. Your Phase A, probably not going to bring in any tanks. In the support tab, we have the Flammenwerfer as usual. Then we have the uh, UE 630F uh, Sicherungs, which is uh, pretty cool. It's basically a mounted MG 271. Now, it's interesting that the 271 that's mounted here doesn't have the same accuracy in HE as the infantry one, because if it did, these would be very awesome little units, but Unfortunately, I don't, I'm not entirely sure they're going to be that useful. 800 meter range is still decent, and obviously they're armoured. But um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure people are going to be bringing them in. Bit of a meme unit. Um, we do have Opal Blitz munitions in phase A, B, and C in this division, so you're not going to run out of supply anytime soon. You also have access to Stur 42s in phase B, so these will give you a bit of punching power, uh, give you the... Uh, support you need to uh, push forwards with your infantry like I reckon like a couple of Luftwaffe Jaeger in front of one of these Stier 42s would work out quite nicely so we'll have to wait and see if that does in the anti-tank tab we're starting off with the uh, Panzerstrecks here the Luftwaffe Panzerstrecks they come in a UE 630F so armored transport and uh, I mean they're not great they don't have any veterancy or anything, but they still have the Panzerstreck, so they could ambush quite easily. And you're probably going to be relying them on, on them in Phase A, uh, just because you have such low availability of uh, AT guns. You also have the uh, Panzerjäger uh, Bren, which is basically a captured uh, Bren gun with a 47mm cannon on top of it. Nothing too special. Quite nice rate of fire. Can take out half-tracks quite easily. So if you're coming up against like a third armoured or something, you might want to use one of these. And at close range, it might also do quite a lot of damage. But um, yeah, again, no veterancy. And I think too much to rely on. Probably won't see them too much. Pack 38, pretty standard stuff in phase A. Get more of them in phase B. Pack 40s in phase B as well. Only one of them though. And then you get even more pack 38s in phase C availability. And pack 40s again. But you're probably not going to be relying on these uh, packs too much. As if we jump into the anti-air tab, this is where things really get fun. Um, starting off with the Flak Panzer Bren. So this is a Bren carrier again, captured Bren carrier, but this has a 6HE power 20mm Flak 38 mounted on top, as well as an MG34 mounted on the hull. So in total, it has a pretty damn decent HE 
which is really nice for like infantry support honestly 800 meter 600 meter range ideally you can put a total of 13 he power on your opponent which is quite awesome so yeah i think we might see these come in and be used as a like, close range fire support if not 20 mil might also be just useful anyway in phase a you can get some flak fillings you can also get uh, the flak 43 37 mils with the 13 he power 1000 meter range but uh, the main thing that you can bring in is these flak 36s so this is probably why you're not going to bring in any tanks in phase a because you'll be buying in flak 36s and using them as like pseudo tanks um so yeah i think that's what we're going to be seeing instead and there's plenty of uh, activation slots on the anti-air tab that the Luftwaffe can make use of so this is pretty cool um two star flak 36s in phase a some might al almost call that op get a command nearby that's a three star flak 36 in phase a if we move on to phase B, we're going to see like this armored truck, pretty awesome armored truck, the NAG uh, 4500 with a 37 mil on the back of it. Quite fast on road, not very fast off road, but uh, looks decent. Then we have the NAG with the drilling on the back. These are the two drilling drilling uh, um, MG 151s. 15 millimeter triple guns with uh, 18 HE power, 1,395 rate of fire. So these are like flag fillings on steroids. Um, they are quite expensive, 100 points, and the truck is unarmored, so leaves it vulnerable to like strafing runs and stuff. But I don't think like a strafing run would really work against this, just because of like the sheer firepower that it can put out. But still, like a mortar strike or something might just be too much for this and you might lose it for free. But yeah, interesting little aircraft or anti-aircraft uh, unit. I'll have to wait and see how it really plays out. Honestly, I feel like they're going to be a bit too brittle uh, in comparison to like the NAG with the with the armor. Then we have the uh, flag swilling and uh, this is a double... 37 mil AA weapon. It's pretty damn awesome. 240 rounds per minute. It has 24 HE power, 1000 meter range. In comparison to a Flak 36, it's just incredible. Flak 36, like fair enough, 1200 meter range. But the Flak Swilling has 1000 meter range and 24 HE. These are going to be like absolutely incredible for just denying the airspace entirely bring one of these in in phase b and you're setting yourself up to be joined by two more in phase c and uh, i don't think anything's going to be flying around especially with all of these two star flak 36s that you may have noticed there is an awful lot of these flak 36s hanging about or just we'll just call them flak 30 or flak 88s um but yeah still very very good and these will be your again pseudo tanks plus AT plus AA and a combination of the flak swilling and the flak 88s will certainly be a combo that's hard to deal with you're going to have to rely uh, very heavily on uh, artillery to fight against the Luftwaffe now if we jump into the artillery the artillery isn't so great with the Luftwaffe so they're going to have a hard time sort of covering themselves but they still have some decent stuff to work with for example, in phase A, we get some mortars. These mortars aren't very good, 700 meter mortars with a 4 HE, but you do get the uh, 1200 meter range mortars in phase A, 10 HE, which is okay. And you, you can use them actually to cover off your uh, flak uh, 88s early on, as long as you're not bumping into any 24 pounders early. But um, we've also got the FK288 which has a lot longer range, 2,600 meter range. This is okay, <laughs> it has 11 AP power as well, direct fire capability, so you can use it as maybe like a AT gun, but I wouldn't recommend that. Um, in phase B, however, you do get the 1,600 meter range, 20 HE power mortar, so this will allow you to cover your troops a bit more, and then you gain access to some more 
FK288 and the SFH396R, which has a much better HE value, 2600 meter range, four rounds per minute, which is something that I think people will bring in in phase B alongside the 120 millimeter mortars with maybe the uh, 80 millimeter mortars in phase A. That's probably going to be your artillery tab. Now in the air tab, things are very, very cool. You've got the uh, BEO Storch, which is the first off-map air piece in the game or aircraft. Um, 173 millimeter off-map, this can bring in. 100 uh, points acts as a recon as well. And basically what happens is you have three strikes with this and after they are used up it be it just becomes a normal recon plane. So yeah, very cool. And um, works well in conjunction with your artillery or anti-air, sorry, when, once you've already got some in. When, like once you've uh, controlled the sky with the anti-air, you can have one of these fly above your anti-air and uh, hit those uh, strikes where you need them. So I'd save the strikes till later on, honestly, in this plane in general. It's still awesome that you can bring it in in phase A, just in case you need any quick um, off-map to help you out. Then we have the uh, ME109 G2R1s, which have the 15 HE power bombs. Just one 15 HE power bomb. Moving into phase B, we have HS129s with the 9 AP power. We've got uh, Focke Wolf 190 A8BR21s with the two 25 HE power rockets. Now, I think these are going to be used a hell of a lot, not just because they have the rockets, but just in general as fighter aircraft. Focke Wolf 190s have a lot of like HE value. You can see here these 20 mil cannons give it eight HE power on its main cannons and two on its uh, MG131s, and that basically puts 10 HE power on target and you get these behind someone that's falling back after being hit by all of your anti-air and you're going to be winning as well as having those rockets to use. Then we have some JU-188s, nice addition to the uh, to the game. We've got the 28 50 kilogram bombs, another carpet bomber similar to that of the B-26B in the uh, 4th Armoured. 28 5HE power bombs, going to be hitting a lot of air area and stunning stuff, not necessarily getting too many kills though. Another off map recon plane available in phase C, this one with 210mm off map. And then we have a HS129 B3 with the 16 AP power and more JU88s or JU188s. Two more with the uh, 28 bombs and two with the 1000 kilogram bombs these are two 30 he power bombs very very awesome i think we might see these used quite a lot two star veterans here as well going to be uh, taking a lot of fire before they start to fall back so that's pretty cool and that's your lot for the uh, 16th luftwaffe cool division i really really love this anti-air tab it's so cool i can't wait to see what people do with this division in the actual game when once the uh, dlc is released uh but yeah that's your lot um hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video hopefully you'll join me in the next one but thanks for watching and i will see you then goodbye